Hello and welcome to a fresh new episode of Science Monitor, our weekly update on all that is happening in the field of science and technology in and around the country. From novel tools to detect dyslexia to AstroSat spotting crab nebula and much more. The week was a buzz with many exciting scientific happenings. We'll get you all the details. Let us begin with the headlines first. AstroSat spots crab nebula. Dali, the novel dyslexia screening tool, offers new hope to detect cognitive disorders. Carbon-based energy technologies, CSIR's NPL's two-day seminar successfully concludes. Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam postdoctoral research fellowships instituted. In our In Focus segment today, we will see who are the women researchers to have made history by winning the Nobel Prize. After Mangalyaan, India's indigenous space observatory AstroSat has turned the world's eyes. A steady in orbit and functional, AstroSat in its very first attempt at scientific observation has spotted the Crab Nebula, the brightest and highest energy X-ray source in the sky. AstroSat, India's first space observatory, is steady in orbit and functioning on full swing. As a first evidence of its function, the cadmium zinc telluride imager instrument aboard AstroSat has successfully started Crab Nebula, the brightest and highest energy X-ray source in the sky. The nebula was detected on 9th October at 3 minutes past 2 p.m. simultaneously by the Mission Operations Centre at Pina, Bengaluru and the Payload Operations Centre Inter-University Centre for Astronomy and Astrophysics, Pune. The spotting of Crab Nebula is a crucial event as researchers often use Crab Nebula as a reference to calibrate hard X-ray detectors and the spotting implies that the instruments on board AstroSat are in good health and can locate X-ray sources. According to sources, AstroSat has also spotted and viewed Cygnus X1, a black hole source, for two days. Crab Nebula was spotted soon after AstroSat passed through the South Atlantic Anomaly Region, the anomalous magnetic field region of Earth with excess charged particles. The view was enabled after researchers suppressed the noise caused by unwanted charged particles. Since the charged particles could affect the functioning of equipments, all the instruments on board were switched off during the passage of AstroSat. According to researchers, other X-ray instruments on AstroSat would be made operational in the coming weeks and all X-ray instruments will be function in about a month. Dyslexia or reading disorder is much more common than we think. Often mistaken for low IQ and children's laziness, this learning disability often goes undetected, sometimes until adulthood. Now, in a major step towards early detection of dyslexia, a team of researchers have developed a novel dyslexia screening tool named DALI for school students. Now, this tool, focused on school students, offers a new ray of hope for early detection and management of the disorder. The issue faced by 8-year-old Ishan in Tare Zamipar was perhaps the first brush with the realities of dyslexia for many of us. Caused by a host of genetic and environmental factors, dyslexia, also known as reading disorder, is a learning disability characterized by trouble with reading, spelling, writing and understanding text despite normal intelligence. While it is estimated that about 3 to 10 percent of Indian population suffer from dyslexia, more than often the condition goes undiagnosed for years, sometimes until adulthood. Now, in a major step towards advancing cognitive sciences, Indian researchers have indigenously developed dyslexia screening tools in four Indian languages, including English. 
the Minister for Science and Technology and Earth Sciences. Dr. Harshvardhan, on 15th October, released the newly developed screening tools for teachers and assessment tools for psychologists for dyslexia. I feel that the uh, worth of this book is when each one of us develops a new dream and make sure that whatever has been contributed by these authors and whatever has been uh, put in terms of knowledge by these learned authors, it is actually uh, translated into real action. We uh, are able to transfer this knowledge to each and every person who has the ability and the education already for diagnosing such ailments. The screening tool for dyslexia called DALI is a comprehensive screening and assessment battery for children with or at risk for dyslexia between the classes of 1 to 5. DALI was developed by the researchers of the National Brain Research Centre under the guidance of Dr. Nandini Chatterjee Singh and supported by the Department of Science and Technology has been designed for teachers to identify dyslexia among students. While the junior screening tool is specially designed for students between 5 to 7 years, that is, classes 1 and 2, the middle screening tool is designed for children from classes 3 to 5 under the age group 8 to 10. The screening kit has been standardized and validated across four languages, that is, Hindi, Marathi, Kannad and English, across schools at five centers involving 4,840 children from classes 1 to 5. The event also saw the release of the book entitled Specific Learning Disorder, Indian Scenario, authored by Dr. Rajesh Sagar, Ramandeep Patnayak and Manju Mehta of the Department of Psychiatry, All India Institute of Medical Sciences. The book is a complete compilation of information on learning disabilities, particularly Specific Learning Disorder or SLD. without carbon is unimaginable. From equipments to energy technologies, the world is dependent on carbon. Focusing on the use of carbon to generate cleaner alternate energy technologies, a two-day national seminar was recently conducted in CSIR's National Physical Laboratory. Let us see this report. Carbon, one of the most abundant elements on Earth, has since ancient times played a crucial role as energy resources. In today's scenario with increasing demand for energy-related technologies, carbon assumes much more importance. Carbon has a vital role to play in the development of clean and alternative energy technologies. Highlighting this, CSIR's National Physical Laboratory on 15th and 16th October conducted a two-day seminar focused on the uses of carbon for generating alternate and clean energy technologies. Carbon is a very dangerous material for us. But it is so much material that carbon dioxide is carbon dioxide or any different gases. It is harmful. But if you look at the other angle, it is a lot of material for us. Like carbon fiber, graphene, carbon nanotube. These are all materials हमारे एनर्जी डेवलपमेंट करने के लिए एनर्जी स्टोर करने के लिए उपयोग आ रहे हैं। The two-day national seminar was focused on the use of various carbon-based substances like graphite, fullerene, diamond, graphene, carbon nanotubes, and the particles etc. to generate and store energy. शोध के लिए कार्बन जैसा पहले एक हमारे पारंपरिक कार्बन जो होते थे वो ग्रेफाइट या कोयला उस फॉर्म में होते थे लेकिन अभी नए कुछ हाल के वर्षों में कार्बन नैनोट्यूब्स ग्रेफीन और अनेक अनेक चीज़ें उसमें निकल के आने लगी हैं इसके अलावा इसका चूंकि सरफेस एरिया इतना ज़्यादा होता है नैनो पदार्थों का तो इसकी वजह से इसका काफ़ी उपयोग बहुत सी संसाधनों में होता है the event aimed to bring together leading researchers, academicians, industrialists and scholars on a common platform to deliberate and discuss on novel carbon-based technologies and exchange experiences. And what is more special is that the seminar has been conducted in the national language Hindi. 
all the abstracts and research communications were presented in Hindi. Actually, in NPL, there are a lot of fields in NPL. And this Rajya Bhasha, which is Hindi, for its purpose, in 2011, there was a conference in Hindi. And every year, there is a conference in Hindi. And every year, साल मतलब एवरी ईयर एक टॉपिक चुना जाता है हर एक डिवीजन से इस बार ये कार्बन मटेरियल्स के ऊपर मतलब चुना गया है The national seminar saw enthusiastic participation of many experts who attended various sessions Renowned researcher Professor Krishnalal presided over the event as chief guest while Dr Chandrasekhar presented the inaugural address the event also included a poster presentation during which three best posters chosen by an eminent jury were awarded. And here is a golden opportunity for young researchers working in the field of environment and ecology. The Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change has announced the launching of post-doctoral research fellowships in the name of late Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam. Now, Dr. Kalam was a strong champion of environment conservation and the fellowship comes as a befitting tribute to the late scientist president on his 85th birthday. Commemorating the memories of the visionary leader, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam, October 15th, Dr. Kalam's 85th birthday was celebrated as Students' Day. On this occasion, with the objective of promoting young researchers in the country, the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change has announced the launching of postdoctoral research fellowships. The postdoctoral fellowship program is aimed at young researchers having completed their PhD or about to complete their PhD in areas related to environment and ecology and preferably below the age of 35 years. The tenure of the fellowship is for a period of three years and the fellowship award includes a monthly fellowship equivalent to that of a research associate together with an annual research contingency grant of Rs 1.5 lakh. The postdoctoral fellow will also be entitled to house rent allowance and other benefits as per the ministry's guidelines applicable for research associateship. An expert committee headed by Dr. R. A. Mashelkar will select the researchers eligible for Dr. A. P. J. Abdul Kalam postdoctoral research fellows. Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change plans to bring out the advertisement calling for applications for the fellowship program shortly and the guidelines for the program will be uploaded on the ministry's website. And now it is time to take a short break. We'll be back with more science news. Stay with us. Welcome back after the break, you're watching Science Monitor. Let us now have a look at some important science and technology activities happening in India and abroad in our next segment, Science Express. We will have a close brush with a giant asteroid as it will fly past Earth on 31st October. According to experts from NASA, the asteroid called 2015-TB145 will pass our planet by only 4,99,000 kilometers on October 31st at over 125,529 kilometers per hour. The asteroid is estimated to be between 280 to 620 meters in diameter and is considered to be potentially hazardous due to its close proximity to Earth's and erratic orbit. In a major step towards ensuring better utilization of blood and blood components in blood banks, the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, on the recommendation of the National Blood Transfusion Council, has identified two major initiatives. While the first step permits the transfer of blood from one blood bank to another, 
following detailed guidelines. Under the second initiative, a surplus plasma exchange value of 1600 per litre of plasma has been fixed. Under the second provision, blood banks with surplus plasma can exchange it for consumables, equipments, etc. or plasma-derived products as per their need. In a preparatory meeting of diplomats and experts for the upcoming UN Climate Summit in Paris, held recently, the head of OECD's Climate Change Division, Simon Buckle, said that most countries around the world will need to step up their efforts to cut down on carbonization. The meeting was also called for stepping up efforts to meet the targets. The exotic orchids displayed at the Kaziranga National Orchids and Biodiversity Park in Assam is becoming a major tourist attraction. The park come conservation centre located at Durgapur village houses over 500 varieties of orchids along with 200 kinds of paddy, medicinal plants and various types of local flowers and fruits. Along with orchids, the park is also home to rhinos, tigers, elephants, wild buffaloes, swamp deer, hog bears, sambhars, wild boars and many other species of animals and birds. Recently, the news has been abuzz with the announcement of Nobel Prizes. And yet again, women scientists have proved their merit by winning the Nobel for the discovery of novel therapy for malaria Ms. Tu Yu Yu has joined the long rank of outstanding women researchers to have bagged the Nobel. In today's In Focus, we will pay tributes to these extraordinary women Nobel laureates who have left their mark in the scientific world. Nobel Prize, the highest recognition in science. The Nobel Prizes are awarded annually by the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences, the Swedish Academy, the Karolinska Institute and the Norwegian Nobel Committee to individuals for their outstanding contributions in the fields of science that includes chemistry, physics, physiology or medicine along with literature, peace and economics. Bagging the Nobel this year is Miss Tu Yu Yu for discovering a novel therapy against malaria called artemisinin. Her historical accomplishment follows a long tradition of 16 outstanding women researchers who were honoured with Nobel for their extraordinary contributions. If one was to look at the chronological order of women researchers who have had the honour, it starts with a Polish researcher called Mary Szklodowska Curie, known to us as Madam Mary Curie. She, along with her husband, is known for the discovery of radioactivity through radium and polonium. For this, she was awarded the Nobel Prize for Physics in 1903. Her success at isolating pure radium won her the Nobel Prize again for chemistry in the year 1911. Let alone being the first woman to bag the Nobel, Madame Curie is also so far the one among the only four researchers to have won the Nobel Prize twice. In 1935, Irene Joliot Curie, daughter of Marie Curie, was awarded the Nobel Prize for Chemistry in 1935 for discovering artificial radioactivity demonstrated by bombarding boron, aluminium and magnesium with alpha particles to create radioactive isotopes. In 1947, Gertie Theresa Corey became the first woman to win the Nobel Prize for Physiology or Medicine. An expert in enzymes and hormones, she won the Nobel Prize for proposing the Cori cycle and deciphering the mechanism by which enzymes convert glycogen into lactic acid and then back again to glycogen to be stored as a source of energy. German-born Maria Goepert Mayer was a part of the world-famous Manhattan Project that developed the atom bomb. Maria Goepert Mayer won the Nobel Prize for Physics in 1963 for developing the nuclear shell model. 
a mathematical model to explain the structure of atomic nuclei. Today, the world celebrates 100 years of X-ray crystallography. Dorothy Crowfoot Hodgkin, the British researcher who advanced crystallography and discovered the 3D structures of penicillin, vitamin B12 and insulin. Dorothy won the Chemistry Nobel Prize in 1964 for developing protein crystallography and determining the structure of vitamin B12 essential to combat pernicious anemia. In 1977, the Nobel Prize for Physiology or Medicine went for the second time to a woman researcher, Rosalind Sussman Yalo. Rosalind Sussman Yalo was an American medical physicist who was awarded the Nobel for development of the radio immunoassay technique. The technique has important medical applications and is today widely used to measure the concentrations of hormones, viruses, vitamins, enzymes and drugs in blood, especially insulin. This was followed by an American geneticist, Barbara McClintock, who won the Nobel for Physiology or Medicine in 1983 for discovering the genetic elements called jumping genes or transposons which shifted its location in the chromosomes from generation to generation. In 1986, Rita Levi Montalicini, an Italian neuroembryologist, was awarded the Nobel in Physiology or Medicine for the discovery and isolation of nerve growth factors, a novel class of proteins that controls the growth, maintenance and survival of nerve cells and plays a role in degenerative diseases like Alzheimer's disease. The American biochemist Gertrude Elian was awarded the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine in 1988 for developing many new life-saving drugs. The 1995 Nobel for Physiology or Medicine went to Christian Newslein Wallhard for deciphering the genetic mechanisms that allow multicellular organisms to develop from a single cell and explaining birth defects in humans using fruit fly as model organism. Humans can recognize and remember more than 10,000 odors and the sense of smell is controlled by a complex olfactory system. The 2004 Physiology or Medicine was given to the American biologist Linda Buck for deciphering the secrets of sense of smell and how the olfactory receptors work. Francois Bar Sanusi, the French virologist, was one of the brains behind the discovery of the much dreaded human immunodeficiency virus or HIV that cause AIDS. Sanusi was bestowed with the Nobel for Physiology or Medicine in 2008. 2009 saw women researchers bagging Nobel both in the field of chemistry and physiology or medicine. While the 2009 Chemistry Nobel was awarded to Ada E. Yonat, the Israeli crystallographer, for her groundbreaking work on the structure of the ribosomes and deciphering the mechanism of protein biosynthesis. The 2009 Nobel for Physiology or Medicine jointly went to Elizabeth Blackburn and Carol W. Grader for discovering how chromosomes are protected by telomeres. The end caps of chromosomes and the enzyme telomerase, thus preventing cancer. 2014 again saw May Britt Moser, the renowned Norwegian psychologist and neuroscientist, being awarded the Nobel for Physiology or Medicine for discovering the grid cells that make up the positioning system in the brain. As evident, women scientists hold a glorious record of winning Nobel throughout decades. This wonderful history will forever continue to inspire generations of researchers yet to come. Well, that is all for this episode of Science Monitor. Do tell us how do you like our program. You can send your feedback and suggestions to us. Our email ID is news at vigyanprasar.gov.in. You can also write in to us at Vigyan Prasar C24, Kutub Institutional Area, New Delhi 110016. 
Well, that is all for today. We'll be back with fresh new stories on science and technology again next week. Till then, keep watching Rajasabha TV and think scientific. Bye-bye.